in essence, uh, uh, I think uh, if you're looking for a part-time job or to have a few months of different experience, uh, the opportunities are here for this kind of thing. And certainly if you're looking for uh, uh, to test the waters as uh, the maritime industry is a, is a uh, profession, you can uh, you know, get your time and licenses out here for these boats, which is, uh, they don't call them tickets for nothing. You know, the more paper you have, the greater salaries you make and the uh, greater the opportunities are. But uh, it's not a magic uh, you know, formula. For example, if you, your desire is to get a captain's license and be a charter boat captain, or work on a cruise ship, or captain a yacht, or whatever. You know, you, you have to uh, work at it like any, any other uh, career. You have to pursue it. Uh, things aren't going to happen for, by magic. You come out here and then, uh, uh, you know, you can expect uh, in a few months you're captaining a very big uh, famous yacht, which I have done. Uh, but you have to, you know, uh, uh, work at it. You know, the sea, the sea, sea schools are very current. There's Houston Marine and Sea School. They're very current on the amount of days it takes. I don't know what everyone's process uh, uh, is, but, you know, for me it was 720 days at sea uh, for the 100, and t 100 ton license, and you had to have tonnage uh, uh, on uh, that appropriate tonnage to be able to get this license. Uh, I think you have to put 90 days on uh, a 100 ton vessel to be able to get a 100 ton license. But out here the days are counted as uh, 12 hour days, which is time and a half. So you can figure, you know, your regular eight hour days working for an eight hour a day company, for example, deep sea fishing, versus out here you get uh, 12 hour days. So this is time and a half towards your sea time. So, you know, you can figure out that uh, 720 days, if you're working time and a half, it wouldn't take very long, you know, to put the effort into getting this license. Like any other industrial type of job, there's, uh, of course, uh, inherent dangers. And uh, most of the accidents out here are caused by uh, uh, negligence of the personnel that works out here not following safety rules or not using their head as, uh, or looking ahead at what's going to happen. But anytime you get big equipment like these ships around big cranes and oil rigs, uh, there's definitely uh, some danger there. Uh, but it's no more dangerous than any other, uh, you know, uh, occupation, whether you're a lifeguard or whether you're a, uh, a race car driving crew or whatever. It's about, in my estimation, the same risk. If you know what you're doing and if you're careful and uh, uh, if you follow the safety guidelines, you know, you'll be all right. There's uh, crew boats, which are the, they have the big passenger compartment. They're the aluminum uh, faster ships uh, that carry the uh, passengers and uh, smaller loads out to the rigs. Uh, they can get in and out very quickly. Uh, some of these boats they're designing are, are going, you know, 20 uh, knots or more. And uh, these are very quick boats. Then the utility boats, they carry a little larger cargo and they have tank packs of water and fuel pumping capacity, which is uh, important, of course, to the rigs uh, and the platforms. Uh, but these cargo boats, they're the biggest uh, in the, uh, you know, boats that are leased out to these companies. These uh, range, uh, you know, close to 200 feet in length, some of them. Uh, so in essence, the, the uh, crew boats are in the 100 to 120 foot range. Uh, some companies are coming out with, you know, these giant crew boats that are, are fast and uh, actually they're uh, going, uh, they're building them, you know, 140 feet, some of them. Uh, the utility boats are slower boats, heavier boats. Uh, they don't they probably bounce as much, you know, you're not going as fast. Uh, but they're roughly the same size as the crew boat. But these uh, 
supply boats or cargo boats as they call them. They, they're the biggest out here and uh, they have uh, the, the job of tying up to the rig and uh, you know pumping them all the uh, lubricants and the uh, uh, water and fuel and can carry quite a bit of cargo uh, which I'm sure on your you'll see on this video some of the uh, deck capacities of these boats. Florida is big for yachting. Uh, of course Fort Lauderdale is the uh, world center for yachting if you would. Uh, but uh, Texas and Louisiana have the oil industry. So, you know, for me it's been, uh, uh, you, have, you have to learn, you know, the st style of uh, work for these different types of boats. Uh, and I specialize in, in the oil field uh, jobs I can run, crew, utility, or supply boats. And uh, I also, can run power or sailing yachts and I am experienced in the operations and the uh, uh, etiquette of uh, and the management of these uh, bigger you know corporate yachts. Uh, some people specialize in fishing so this is a whole different thing. Some yachts are fishing yachts which I am uh, can fish a little but I'm not I'm not super proficient at fishing so someone that wants to fish, you'd find a, a yacht or a sport fisherman or a party boat that specializes in this. And uh, you know, on top of your licenses and your seamanship, you also have to know what that niche is and have the skills. And yachting, for example, people skills or interpersonal skills are very important. And uh, you can't be, you know, a recluse or a hermit. You've got to be able to socialize and. Uh, you have to be able to communicate. Uh, you have to be able to bring a pleasant atmosphere, you know, to the guests and to the uh, uh, people that you're entertaining, whether they're whether they're uh, people from the company, uh, distributors, or or uh, VIPs that they're entertaining, or if they're charter clients, which in some cases the boats are chartered out. Uh, you know, out here you're you're not dealing with. Uh, you're dealing with people, but uh, on a much uh, uh, on a much uh, different plane. Uh, so the language is different, and the uh, expectations are are different, and the whole culture out here is uh, much different. You have to deal with, of course, the people on the rig. You have to deal with the people that are loading the ships and where you're docking. You have to deal with your company. So you've got to be able to communicate with these folks in, in their own language uh, and uh, to their expectations. Uh, yachting, for example, uh, is a lot more formal, if you would, in your dress and in your language and uh, in your contracts, uh, whatever's going on. Uh, here, getting the job done is what's important, and there's not uh, a whole lot of PR to be done. Uh, although, you know, being friendly to some degree can help everything along and help the morale, that sort of thing. But uh, it's two different worlds. So I have tried to round personally my my skills out to, that I could run any size vessel within my. Uh, range or my license, uh, any type of vessel. And this is what I've set out to do since I was a young, young man, to round out my, my skills and abilities to be able to, uh, uh, to be able to go after, you know, the best jobs and the best pay, this sort of thing. Home ports for the company, some are in Morgan City, uh, some are in different towns in, uh, in Texas. Well, many people, uh, you know, choose to, who are working as full time will work two weeks on or 14 days on and seven days off. Uh, sometimes you can work 14 days on and 14 days off. But for me, uh, you know, when I was going to school, I would come out here four months out of the year straight. Uh, I worked three months in the summer and then the month during the Christmas break. Uh, so I'd have four months out of the year and the rest of the time I would go to college. So this gave me, you know, four months of work a year uh, and being able to save the money, you know, 
uh, while you're working out here. Uh, I've always chose when I come out here to work uh, for longer periods of time, you know, a couple of months or three months at a time, and then you get off or whatever, and then you come back. Uh, but it all depends on what the personnel uh, program is, too. You know, you, you have, it's not uh, always, you're not always able to choose when you can work and when you can't. They have to have you on call and come out when they need you. And this is part of the program uh, for a lot of these companies. But uh, you can find, for example, a schedule uh, if you wanted to work opposite another captain or uh, a crew member in your capacity or your, your job. Uh, you could work off and on. Uh, if it balanced out, then you could try to find the right boat and crew that you like to work with. And they try to, they try to accommodate you if they can. Uh, because uh, I'm not here year round, you know, I come and, and go. Uh, they use me as a relief captain or relief mate on these different boats. Uh, and uh, plus I can run different types of boats. So uh, this is okay with me because you're not in one place all the time and not with one boat or crew all the time. And it's kind of a change in scenery. So I don't mind uh, uh, working as a relief person. But sometimes you might want to find a crew or boat that you want to stay with. And usually the personnel manager will try to work with you on that. Uh, some companies. Uh, will hire, uh, you know, your wife. And there's captain and wife teams that work out here. And the uh, wife will actually work toward her license. And when she gets her license, then you have two captain uh, in the family and the two captain's incomes coming in, which is a pretty good deal and not a bad way to go if you're going to save money or buy a house or this type of thing.